guys, welcome back to another video. I'm whispering because I don't want to wake the sleeping beast that is the Lego Modular. Let's step into my office. Modulars are these super cool Lego sets that are so different from each other, but a few crucial things bring them together. You may be wondering, Who are you? Who are so wise in the ways of science? That's a great question. I recently received a book about Lego Modulars, and using that, I built my very own. So there are really four things that bring modulars together. Number one is that the base plates have to be 32 studs in length, but it doesn't matter if it's a 16, 48, or even 64 by 32, as long as the length is 32. You can see that my modular is a 16 by 32. The second thing the book told me was that there needed to be two strategically placed 2x1 bricks with technic holes in them, which connects the modulars, literally. You need the first one to be 9 studs away from the edge, and the second one to be 10 studs away from the first, meaning that it is also 9 studs away from the opposite edge. You can then use technic pins to connect them as I am doing. The third thing is that the sidewalk has to be 8 studs in length with a specific pattern, which goes 1x8 light grey tile, 1x2 dark grey tiles, 2x2 dark grey tiles twice, 1x2 dark grey tiles again, and 1x8 light grey tiles. The fourth and final thing is a, is a wombo combo, and it is that at the very right there should be a lamppost and 6 studs away from each edge, there should be a 1x2 grill piece to represent sewer grates. I tried following all these rules to build my very own modular, which is of an antique shop with an apartment on the second floor. For the sidewalk, you can see yeah, I abided walk, by the rules, and I put grates and a lamppost, which is unfortunately green instead of white, since I don't have any white ones. I also included a trash can and a nice colorful pattern at the center of the sidewalk. There's also a huge tree using a technique that you've probably seen before in my Umbrella Academy video. I made it using a Technic connection for the trunk, and then dumped a ton of leaves on it, and bam. For the front, you can see that the first floor has a nice glass door and some windows, but I used snot technique to do tiling for the walls, which looks pretty cool. I also used slopes at the bottom of the facade to give it some more depth. The rest of the walls are dark tan. Let's take a look at the inside. On the left side, you're greeted with the cashier, which has a map and a cash machine thingy, and is being controlled by Winona Ryder herself. You can see Steve Minecraft is paying for the map, as he's probably lost his way home. Right next to the counter, there's this huge record rack, which is inspired by a TD Bricks design, and there's even a record called Toilet Sounds. The real Lisa Kudrow is looking at some of these re records, but cannot find Smelly Cat. Next to the records, there's a gramophone hooked up to a record player, which I think looks super vintage, and the table legs are made with a Harry Potter ones. On the other side of the shop, there's two different vintage TVs on display, one where child Daniel Radcliffe is watching Harry Potter, and another one where C-3PO has mixed the TV up with his boy R2. These TVs both have some pretty spicy designs, and if you want to learn to build them, click on the iCard above. On the far corner, right across from the counter, there's a super cool 80s retro edgy arcade machine, where Gaiden Matarazzo is attempting to slay the dragon with his compass skills. The arcade machine uses a bunch of snot techniques to get the angles right, and I'm really happy with how it looks. At the very back, there's a door which leads to the back. I know, right? Shocker. One thing I don't like about the modular set is that they're left un untouched at the back, which kind of sucks, so I made sure to include detail. You have a drunk David Harbour dressed like Magnum P.I., and there's a bunch of junk on the floor, including this box full of unpaid bills. There's also a ladder that leads to the storage room of the store. Making your way up to the second floor, you can see that the wall is full-on nougat masonry brick style, with some large windows at the center that stick out for extra dimension. The rest of the walls are gray and white. On the inside, you have Will Byers and Severus Snape living together. At the back, there's a mini kitchen which includes an oven, stove, sink, cabinets, and a fridge. There's also a closet. On the right, there's the first ever bunk bed I've ever built with some really ugly bed sheets. On the left, there's a couch on an epic carpet and a super flat TV. At the very back of this floor, there's a storage room for the store which has some boxes of old junk and a grandfather clock. As we come to the roof, you can see that there's a super colorful sign that spells soda, which I made using Lego dots. There's also a pretty big AC unit and one of these water storage towers. Ladies and gentlemen, that was my first Lego modular. I hope you did enjoy, and if you did, then consider liking, subscribing with notifications on, because it really helps me out a lot. Remember to join the Discord server, link in the description, and follow me on Instagram, where you can see all of the behind the scenes in action. Stay safe, and bye!